it's a pleasure to be with you here tonight. It really is. I just wish that the evening was called something different. Instead of the night of the conflict, the night of peace, the night of love, or the night of harmony. However, we are here tonight for the night of conflict. I believe the name tells it all. It's a pretty illustrative of the world that we live in. A world that is torn by wars, conflict, poverty, and uncertainty. No clearer evidence from this world than what we're seeing around us. In Myanmar, in Yemen, and all over the world. I have a theory for why our world looks the way that it does. I believe we have a leadership crisis. Our leaders, the people who were supposed to deliver on behalf of us, have not done so. To the contrary, in many places, they have failed us. Tonight, as I stand before you, talking to you, there are tens of thousands of Yemeni children who went to bed without having a meal. They are in bed, hungry, and maybe angry at all of us. However, I'm not here tonight to talk to you about Yemen. I'm Syrian, and I'm here to talk to you about Syria. Because Syria is another example of this leadership crisis, of this leadership failure. Ladies and gentlemen, I come from a country that has been racked by a conflict for the last seven years. We've lost more than 500,000 people to barrel bombs, indiscriminate bombardment, chemical attacks, aerial bombardment. Tens of thousands of people have lost their lives in the dungeons of the dictator. Another tens of thousands wait the same destiny. Half of the population has been displaced. Six million people have had to leave the country and became refugees, like myself, in the area and all over the world. Another six million people have become internally displaced. More than half of the population of the country are in need of international humanitarian aid. What is even more worse is that we have lost a generation yet to come. UNICEF today said that two million Syrian children are outside of schools. This is the biggest catastrophe. What happened in Syria is not only the, an issue of leadership failure at the national level. It's rather an international failure. It's the international failure of the Security Council, of the B5, of whoever governs our world. The same international community that for years and years could not drop food, water, or medical supplies to what at the beginning of 2018 was 1.7 million people under siege in Syria. In the face of this international inaction, political stalemate, and irresponsibility, we decided that we were going to take the initiative. Three years ago, almost to the day, in a cold, lonely room in a Dutch hospital, the Mani Humanitarian Organization was born. Back then, doctors thought that I had a terminal illness. Daman was a collective dream, a collective idea, not only by me, but by a, a small group of Syrian activists who wanted to change. We were all broke outside of our country, had no connection, no network, but we had hope. 
and we had a sense of responsibility. We decided that we're gonna stand for those who need us the most. Over the last three years, Daman, as an organization, has grown to become a one million meal to people. A 52 plus people going to see a doctor. Thousands of people having access to clean water and to education. Something that is very small, that started in, believe me, very lowly room, grew bigger and bigger. In the course of these years, we've seen the highs and downs. We've seen the good part and the bad part. Last year, on the 29th of December, a colleague of ours died in the bombardment. He was a nurse and he was trying to help people. Our medical centers were bombed repeatedly for no other reason but because we were helping. We were helping civilians. We never gave up. We never stopped. And there was a reason for that. There were actually many reasons for that. But one of the biggest reasons was the laughter and smile of children. The look in their eyes every time we managed to get them a cookie or a biscuit to wherever they were hiding. This is what gave us strength, and this is what made us carry on to the current day. About a year and a half, I received a video message from an old lady. She is the age of my grandma. She sent me a video saying, I don't know who you are. I hear so much about you. I love you. And thanks for everything you do. Until this moment, every time I feel I need some extra motivation, I need some extra help, I look at this video. And this is how we carry on. The message that I want to get to everyone here is don't wait for the political leadership. Don't wait for the Security Council. Don't wait for the B5. They have all the time in the world. Be the change you want to see. Be the help that you want to extend to people. As your speaker, I have one ask of you. Tonight and tomorrow, try and find an NGO that is working on the ground. Donate a little bit of money, a little bit of time, or a little bit of knowledge. That will help, and that will definitely mean that a child sitting somewhere, afraid, without something to eat, and feeling abandoned will feel that something has changed and that will give him a new life. And with that, I want to thank all of you for being here. Thanks a lot and have a nice evening.